This time we want to do something similar like we did already with the filtering of the data, but this time we want to select the data. You will see the difference and the similarities in the process. So currently we have here again our map, our background map, the basic one with the places where we would like to go out and down. And again we would like to select certain data and for example save them or probably use other processing software later on. Currently we only stick to saving them. So now that you know that we can move around in the map, I will zoom out to see all the points that we have here. And for example the easiest way to select data is to select them by their spatial extent. So for example if we want to select those data that are within our background map, there's probably a clever way, more clever way to do that, but currently I will just draw a rectangle by using this button up here. Click on the, one of the corners, drag this rectangle to the extent that I would like to have, release the button, and now you can see that the color of these points has changed to yellow, which is usually the color that's used to indicate that these points are selected. If we now look to the attribute table that's connected with our data, I open here, you can see that some of the rows here are now highlighted and these represent the selected data. And I can also click down here to show not all objects but for example all selected objects. That's the second option here. And then I see only those here that are highlighted in our attribute table. Back to see all and close that again. So we have other options here to select things. For example I can draw a polygon to select stuff. To do that I select this option here and then I start drawing a polygon. Left click somewhere and then I can encompass the data by clicking multiple times to make this kind of polygon here for selection. If I'm finished I can use the right mouse button and then these points are selected here by their spatial extent. And there are also other options for a circular selection or a freehand selection or single click. We will not do that here. So that's by uh, how you can select easily points according to a spatial extent. And if you're fine with or if you're done with the selection, you can always use this button here to unselect all points. I do it here. Now everything is unselected again. That would be one option similar to what we have seen by filtering. We can also select points according to their values or the values in the attribute table. To do so, I can, for example, here select this next button and there is select objects by value. Uh, I can also select everything, I can invert the selection and I can select the objects by an expression. We will probably cover that later. Now we just select by value. If I click on that button I get here a form where I can see all the different columns or fields in our data set and I can select if the search should, should be case sensitive or not case sensitive and I can also exclude this uh, field or select different options here. Usually if I start typing somewhere I go again to our amenity option and I start writing. I s now I just typed B and I see now all the values that starts with B. I can also go for R, R and now I can see all the values that contains the letter R. I will select again the bar so I just press B and then select the bar here. Now you can see this has changed here from exclude field to contains. So contains means we select only those points that are that there where their uh, value contains this word here. You could also make that shorter. So I, for example just 
BA and then all the points would be selected that contains in the field the um, text BA. We go to bar, we select those and now I can also make this objects flash that fulfill this selection. If I do so, now you can see that here some flashing points are there. So I know I know already before selecting which points will be selected. I can zoom to the extent of the selected points. And finally I can click here on select objects. If I have already selected other objects, I can add this to the selection or I can also remove this uh, from the selection and I can also start filtering data. We are now just selecting select objects and click on that and you can see now that these objects here are selected again. So we have again these yellow points here in contrast to the green dots that are not selected. Okay, I can close this down with the selection and now as an example I show you what you can do with the selection. For example, you can again export the data that you've selected here specifically um, only these selections. So you don't have to filter data if you want to export a specific part of the data. Again, I go to project, uh, to um, right click on the layer and select export. That's the fastest way to do. And now I can select you also selected objects, save selected objects as. When I do this then you can see that up here there is a checkbox that's now checked where it says only save only selected objects. And from now on it's the same like saving or exporting the data in a common way, only that this is now selected, so only the selected objects will be saved. And again I can select different ways of how this can be stored as CSV, as shapefile or in any other of these file formats. And all the rest is this essentially the same like would we uh, if we would save the data generally.